he was caring, but yet he was growing you. He, he, he was raising you. I remember him teaching me to ride the bicycle one time. You know, you, you, you him push you and then he let you go, but him don't, you, you still think he's pushing you. Right, so me, I'm riding now. This is at my grandma's house in Miami. And, and there's this circle, like a driveway, but it's a circle. So I'm going around the circle now, but I'm, I thought he was pushing. And then I looked, and I fell. When I looked and saw him wasn't there, I fell. So he comes over and thing, and he said to me, yo, you, you all right? So me say, yeah, I'm get a little cut. He looks at the cut, kisses his teeth like, and just goes inside. <laughs> that was it. I have to start riding. I can ride. <laughs> Bunny told me the story. You know how you get the name Ziggy? So I'm saying, no, I told him I heard a few stories, but tell me. So I'm saying, him and Bob, you know, and his friends, they were playing football in Trenchtown. And I came on the field, and somebody kicked the ball, and they said the ball zig and hit me down. <laughs> and they were making fun of me, calling me Ziggy. <laughs> so that's what Bunny, I believe Bunny, you know, because he was there. So he said, that's how you get the name Ziggy. They were making fun of me because I was crying. Ah, get up, man, Ziggy, Ziggy, you know? It was funny. That, that's the way. I have another better story, but I'll use that one. <laughs> no, tell me that. The oh, the better one? Oh, the, the better one. That, this is much more better for me. Is that Ziggy is a small joint. You know, it's a small, in Jamaica, they call it, like how we hear people say, give me a Ziggy. It's a small spliff, a small joint. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I remember one day I was in Delaware. My grandmother was in Delaware. So one summer or whatever it was, Christmas, I don't remember. But we were in Delaware and I, and I woke up one morning early. And he, is, he would wake up early. I was, don't care what time he go to bed. If he go to bed five, by six, he's up with the sun, you know? So he, he was up and I came out on the porch and I saw him kind of across the street drinking some tea and things. So I went down to him and he said to me, Mark, you know, I was like, what now, maybe about seven? I'm about seven years old. So he looks at me and he says, do you pray? <laughs> so, me, you know, I look at him now and I said, in my head now, I'm thinking fast, like, my gosh, I'm never going to answer this question now. If I say I don't pray, I'm going to kind of let him down and, you know, if I say I do pray, I'm going to lie, right? So I can't lie to him, I can't let him down. So I'm thinking, I right, do oh, answer, what's what you're going to say quick? And I remember that, you know, them time we was in prep school, right? And in the mornings, you have devotion, where you kind of say the Lord's Prayer. Lot, right, so I'm thinking, ah, yeah, yeah, I do pray in my, I don't answer him yet, you know, I haven't answered the question yet, but fast I'm thinking till I come to the conclusion that, yeah, I pray in the morning. So I said to him, yeah, <laughs> you know, with confidence now, yeah. He looks at me and he said to me, what, what, what do you say when you pray? I said, oh my gosh, now I forgot to tell him what I'm praying. <laughs> anyway, I knew the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I knew that, you know. So I just said it. You know, Lord, my shepherd, and thing. And he stood there, you know, until I finished saying it. And he said to me, "You see, when you finish pray, you must say Rastafari." Then he comes close to me and say, "But don't let no one hear you." <laughs> we grew up in church, but we are Rastaf. We is a Rasta family. <laughs> who don't believe in the church, you know what I say? So the, go to church. Yeah, yeah, we'll go, oh, my grandmother, Bob's mom, she used to take us to church all the time. And my mother take us to church all the time too. And even she took Bob to church sometimes, he still had to go sit down there like this. <laughs> in the church, you know, I remember. I, was, I remember seeing him sitting there. I was like, yeah, well, Bob, my father's in church, yeah, you know? But the church play an important role in, 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 in our lives, in Bob's life. Because as a young kid, if Aunt Amy didn't tell you, he loved church. He used to, they used to love taking him to church. 
So I think it's a good foundation for spirituality and for more growth. It wasn't something that was stuffed down our throats, you know. It was important for us to read our Bible. It was important for us to just treat people with respect and never to judge. Those were like the lessons. My father taught me, Ziggy, Sidella, and Sharon. When I said taught us, I mean, you had to, do re mi fa so la, you had to say that and then you had to say it backwards. Do ti la so, serious thing. We used to practice because it was all, we had to be good at it. We just couldn't just do it just because. You know, we had to be good. But it was fun too. It's like, you know, it's not like more of a whip, but I'm serious. But it's fun, you know? Yeah. The thing what it, what that he would do was call us when he was writing some songs, you know? Shout, come. And him call the children and him, come sing. And him say, sing. And he would sing and we would sing what he was singing. So that's what he would do. But Remember doing that with any particular songs? Hey, hey, hey. Maybe Could You Be Love, I think. In, in Miami it was Could You Be Love. I love the drum and the bass. I'm a drum and bass girl, you know? Um, I love the, the, the melodies, you know, the lyrics, of course, you know. Um, I love punky reggae party. I love um, kinky reggae. This song that is special to me, but I, will, I want to say the most distinctive one is Redemption song, the acoustic version. Because that's how Bob Wright, that's how him writes songs. That's, that's Bob right there. That's him, you know. So he'd, that, uh, he'd write all his stuff just to keep Yeah, I'm having guitar and him play, and that's, that's Bob. You know, so I think that one, I would say, is the one that would stand out. No, some of the, those songs is just, why couldn't this man be here now? You know, it just take you in another direction the way you're kind of sad to, you know? Yeah. And of course, it uplifts you still and teaches you everyday life lessons. But personally, you know what I mean? Yeah, I listen specifically sometimes because some songs just take your places and then you, you get in this vibe where, you know, oh my gosh, it's heavy, it's heavy, you know. In a good way though, right? not in a bad way, but it's still heavy, yeah. I think his music was much more adventurous than what I would call local Jamaican music. Mm -hmm. His one was more progressive in terms of, way they kind of the instrumentation, melodies, um, drum, you know, it, it was more adventurous. You know, my father's music sounded different than everybody else's music. It had its own distinct identity and sound. Being on stage with my father, man, that was the ultimate. You know? Because, I mean, that's your champ. You know? Right, that's, that's, that's your, your mentor, your lion. That's, you know what I mean? That's your lion. That's the elder. So being on stage with him, man, was... It was just the world. Well, usually if, we, if we're around, you know, my father's in concert and we're there, we're going to go on the stage. The last song. <laughs> Me and Steve. The last song. And what would the last song usually be? Exodus. That would usually be Exodus. And you sing? <laughs> no, we just dance. Steve might say something, but me, you know, we just dance. We do the dancing. I remember we did one show, and me and Ziggy, come on, Exodus. Me and Ziggy came on the stage, so. After the show, now he came to my mother's room and he said to me, all right, if we're going to do this thing, <laughs> if we're going to come on the stage, you know, we have to go work something out. <laughs> he didn't say we have to work something out. Either I have to teach you how to dance or something like, you know, get a move, get something together. You can't just come from the stage and go wild. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I think my father is with, with, with me, you know, with me all the time, you know. Sometimes... He's visible, sometimes he's invisible. Sometimes you feel it, but the spirit is there. Is there one moment that you will remember? Just running. Yeah. Running on the beach at Bull Bay. <laughs>